Before getting too deep into the details, some submarines can touch the ocean floor. Some movies depict that it's a good way to evade enemy detection, as long as it is above their crush depth. Most of these numbers are classified, but it is estimated that the crush depth is anywhere between 2,400 to 3,000 feet before the submarine is crushed through the ocean's pressure. But it is highly unusual for modern-day submarines to touch the ocean floor, and it's not due to the pressure or the temperature. Stay tuned to learn all about it! Before we get started, make sure to dive on that subscribe button for more interesting videos. And yes, pun intended. So as for starters, what makes a submarine a nuclear submarine? That has everything to do with how the submarines stay fueled. Nuclear submarines use uranium as fuel, which powers the internal nuclear reactor. The nuclear reactor generates energy through a process called fission. This process heats water to produce steam, which in turn is used to turn around the propulsion turbines. Those turbines are used to power the submarine, specifically the propellers that are used to move the submarine around. This whole process is referred to as nuclear marine propulsion. Eventually, the heat-producing engines need to be cooled down, and you can imagine that this takes a lot to be cooled down. Now, that brings us to why nuclear submarines are generally not allowed to, or should not for that matter, touch the bottom of the ocean. Salt water is being used to cool down the engines, which gets sucked in through the bottom of the submarine. That's where the seawater intakes are positioned. That water is going through a process called distillation to get rid of the salt in the water, after which it can be used to cool down the engines. The water that is boiled to produce the steam is also distilled water. The seawater intakes are solely used for just that, taking care of the intake of water. The bottom of the ocean is filled with mud and silt, and you can imagine that this would cause trouble since it would fill up the intakes and complicate the intake of water in the long run. Next to that, rocks and other unseen objects can damage the hull of the submarine, tearing up the intakes or stealth cover. There are, however, a couple of exceptions. Let's introduce the NR-1 submarine. This was a one-of-a-kind nuclear-powered research submarine. The sole reason for this submarine to be in existence was to dive deeper than traditional submarines and conduct research on the bottom of the ocean. It conducted surveys, was used for retrieval of deep-sea material, and was highly likely put on classified missions. There was a clear reason as to why the NR-1 submarine could touch or rest on the bottom. It was all due to having wheels on the bottom of the submarine. It would ride on the ocean floor to conduct geological surveys, for instance, to map the sea bottom, but also for oceanographic research or the installation and maintenance of deep-sea installations. In the 1970s and 1980s, the NR-1 conducted several classified missions involving recovery of objects from the floor of the deep sea. These missions remain classified, and few details have been made public. But one publicly acknowledged mission in 1976 was to recover parts of an F-14 that were lost from the deck of an aircraft carrier and sank with at least one AIM-54A Phoenix air-to-air -air missile. The NR-1 was the brainchild of Admiral Hyman Rickover, who went to great lengths to build the submarine, as it specifically chose his locations to circumvent the oversight that several bureaus had over those locations where warships were built. He is seen as the godfather of nuclear propulsion in submarines and aircraft carriers. Back to the modern days, the whole point of nuclear submarines is to be able to stay submerged for months at a time, having the ability to span multiple seas. Nuclear fission and the internal reactor help to do just that. It creates its own energy through an internal process, which only needs uranium to stay powered. While the process of acquiring it and installing that uranium in the submarines is a whole different topic, it is good to know the process a little bit better. So here it goes. The reactors in a nuclear-powered submarine are typically fueled with uranium, as stated before. Natural uranium mined from the ground consists mainly of so-called isotopes uranium-238, 
mixed with small amounts, small as in 0.7%, of the key isotope, uranium-235. For the reactor to work, the uranium fuel has to be enriched to contain the desired proportion of uranium-235. For submarines, this is typically about 50%. The degree of fuel enrichment is a crucial factor in maintaining a chain reaction that gives a consistent, safe level of energy output. Inside the reactor, uranium-235 is bombarded with neutrons, causing some of the nuclei to undergo nuclear fission. In turn, more neutrons are released, and the process continues in a so-called nuclear chain reaction. The energy is given off as heat, which is explained a little earlier in this video. The advantage of this is that when a nuclear submarine is commissioned by the United States, it will be done with enough uranium to last up to 30 years. Another clear advantage is the efficiency it has over their diesel and electric powered counterparts, which also need air to cool down the engines, meaning it needs to flow to the surface every once in a while. A nuclear submarine can stay submerged for months without breaking the surface giving it a stealthy advantage. One obvious downside is the cost this brings with it. Each nuclear submarine typically costs several billion dollars to build and requires a highly skilled workforce with expertise in nuclear science. Operating these submarines involves lots and lots of money. So why does the nuclear submarine not touch the ground? The water intakes are positioned at the bottom of the submarine potentially sucking in mud, silt, and rocks that could cause the intakes to lose their functions. Next to that, nuclear submarines weigh around 20,000 tons when they are submerged. Imagine the submarine being stuck in the mud, unable to break free from the suction and needing to be freed from it. That would discredit the country's war capabilities, losing all stealth capabilities, potentially in even enemy territory waters. Imagine being stuck in a submarine in enemy waters. That was all for this video. I hope you learned something new, and if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe for more interesting videos.